In the current Chinese regime, heavy censorship on social media and news restricts the mass of Chinese people to their rights of free speech and viewing of what they desire that we hold so dear in current day Western culture. The government in China is an authoritarian one party state. It curbs expression, association, assembly, and religion, prohibits independent labor unions and human rights organizations, and maintains party control over all judicial institutions. The government censors the press, the internet, print publications, and academic research, and justifies human rights abuses as necessary to preserve social stability. In fact, China's restriction and control over the internet is considered to be the most extensive and advanced along with having the most imprisoned journalists out of any country in the world. Restrictions and legislations on the internet in China have been given in a blanketed term known as the Great Firewall of China. One of the largest parts of the firewall is known as the Golden Shield Project. The Golden Shield Project was formed in 1993 with the help of American companies and is a massive surveillance and censoring system. It is citizen-run and monitored by this public security bureau. It is primarily used to monitor domestic websites and emails for key language against the government or possibly calls for riot or protest. When restricted content is found, the Public Security Bureau will send authorities to assess the situation or possibly make arrests. But since citizens have developed new ways to get past the Golden Shield project, such as proxy servers, the Chinese government therefore enacted Operation Tomorrow, an attempt to crack down on youth usage of the internet and content that the government deemed illegal. A prime example of excessive Chinese censorship occurred in 2013, the Southern Weekly incident. Under the command of Tuo Zhen, the propaganda minister, Southern Weekly was forced to add a provided commentary glorifying the Chinese Communist Party with its annual New Year's editorial, which was originally intended to call for proper implementation of the country's constitution. The New Year's editorial with the, with the title Dream of China, Dream of Constitutionalism, calling for the cementing of rights into our constitution, was replaced with praise of the Chinese Communist Party. Moreover, the editorial was edited in at night and without consent of the newspaper. This incident also caused demonstrations outside the gates of the Southern Weekly, newspaper in Guangzhou, China, and drew attentions of many overseas Chinese. According to Southern Weekly editors, this incident isn't a coincidence because 1,000 of their stories were censored one way or another in 2012 alone. Because, because of the incident, keywords such as Southern Weekend, Tio have been have become sensitive words and filtered by the Chinese firewall. Perhaps the most blatant example of Chinese totalitarianism and restrictions of free speech are the seven taboos of higher education. Their instructions to teaching staff in higher education not to mention the following to their students, universal values, press freedom, civil society, citizen rights and historical mistakes of the party, the financial political elite, and judicial independence. This outrageous violation of the basic human rights of free speech is heavily censored, and things like social media posts about it are removed within several hours. Freedom of religion is also a problem in China. The Chinese constitution protects the freedom of religious belief, and the freedom not to believe. However, like civil and political freedoms, religious freedom is also thinly defined. The government recognizes only five official faiths, Buddhism, Taoism, Islam, Catholicism, and Protestantism. This means that religious groups operating outside of these five faiths under the end legal protection and are vulnerable to state suppression. There are also restrictions on some religions to ensure that they are not beholden to foreign powers. Chinese Protestants, for example, are expected to be non-denominational or post-denominational, and Catholics should be independent from the Vatican. Another limitation is that all religious activities are restricted to state-approved locations. Religious groups that meet outside of government-approved temples, churches, and mosques, as well as religious activities that spill over into the public square, are illegal. To ensure that religious groups operate within these narrow parameters, the government has institutionalized religious patriotic associations to oversee and manage each of these five faiths. These associations function as liaisons between the state and religious groups to ensure that they align with the interests of the party. Chinese government has long kept tight reins on both traditional and new media to avoid potential subversion of its authority. Its tactics often entail strict media controls using monitoring systems and firewalls, shuttering publications or websites, and jailing dissident journalists, bloggers, and activists. Google's battle with the Chinese government over internet censorship, and the Norwegian Nobel Committee's awarding of the 2010 Peace Prize to jailed Chinese activist Liu Zaibo have also increased international attention to censorship issues. At the same time, the country's burgeoning economy lies on the web for growth. Experts say the growing need for internet freedom is testing the regime's control. It is safe, therefore, to say that although the human rights situation in China is quite dismal at the moment, there is hope that at some point, China will finally adhere to the Western standards of liberty.